Hey, Florpreneurs. It is I, Allison Ellis, here of realflowerbusiness.com, coming at you with a little centerpiece. I don't know, action, tutorial. I don't know what this will end up being. I'm going to make a centerpiece. I'm filming it for you. <laughs> People have been asking for some more design tips. Allison, you're more than just business. I'd love to see more design tips. So, okay, all right. Um, yeah, I do more than just teach business. I am actually a designer. So I'm going to make a centerpiece. Um, I have talked about this a few times before, but, uh, the Lita Compote, which is pretty famous, pretty popular in weddings lately. Um, I'm going to use this with half of a pillow from Holly Chapel. So the Holly Chapel pillows come, you can like, if you're not familiar with them, you can put them together. They're meant to be used like this, which is great but I find I can actually use less product if I don't have to cover as like as much of the grid. So I just use it half of the pillow. It is a perfect fit in the Lita Compote. And the only thing you have to do is just make sure that you cover up just like with anything. If you're, you know, any mechanics, these little like little nubbins <laughs> where they attach to one another. Uh, I just like to make sure I'm covering those up by using like, for example, just like a piece of eucalyptus, voila, to cover up the mechanics. So normally what you do first is you're gonna tape your grid or tape in your chicken wire or whatever you're using. I don't tape at all when I use this half of the pillow in the Lita Compote. It is just like, fits perfectly and I don't need to do that. So anyway, one of the reasons I like to use it. And I'm gonna show ya what we're working with. Here's my centerpiece recipe, okay? I don't normally pull them and <laughs> put them in a little bucket like this. I have lots of buckets that I'm kind of pulling from usually, um, but I wanted to make it easy for myself. So that is the general recipe I'm gonna use to fill this centerpiece. So let's get to it. Um, a lot of people, first thing I'm gonna do is put on some gloves. I have been using gloves for years now and I love it so much. It keeps pesticides off my hands. It keeps sap off of my hands and um, I can be more aggressive when I'm cleaning flowers. I thought I was aggressive before barehanded, but I'm even more of a savage, <laughs> savage animal um, when I have my gloves. So that's how I get started. First things first, start with greenery. And I'm going to pull out all of my greenery to get started. I'm using Ruscus. I'm using eucalyptus, this beautiful seeded eucalyptus, a little bit of agonis. So I have a recipe that I'm working from. I'm not just making this up as I go along. I'm going to start with my Ruscus and I'm going to cut one piece of Ruscus into multiple different pieces of greenery and use them to camouflage the little nubbins that I mentioned earlier that go around the mechanics here. Then I'm gonna move on to my eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is um, so hit or miss sometimes. I'm always gonna clear uh, excuse me, clean off any of the leaves that have sort of like spots on them. <laughs> I don't know even what you call it. Sometimes it's spots. Sometimes they just sort of start to go transparent. Um, and again, I can cut them into multiple pieces by cutting at the bracts. And I'm gen genuinely just placing it, okay? It's very loosey-goosey. I can lift this up. And it's in here if you needed to change the water or anything you could do that so i'm gonna finish adding my eucalyptus now a lot of people i think this is like a good enough view of everything i'm doing here a lot of people who teach floral design talk about using like a like a lazy susan which i think is great um and i think is probably very helpful but I usually, I don't use a Lazy Susan because I'm usually designing like four centerpieces at once. <laughs> so I have four centerpieces total to finish off my wedding here. I'm gonna make one, what are you? 
And then I'm going to make the other three all at once. So when I do that, I just can't imagine having like multiple lazy Susans. I mean, I guess I kind of could. I could be like little turntables living out my DJ fantasies or something. But um, so I'll just, again, like a savage, I'll just turn it. <laughs> I don't need a lazy Susan. I can turn it. And again, I'm looking for these leaves. I don't know how much you can see. It's like, yeah, there you go. You can see that. Like just, it's gotta go. Doesn't look dead. It looks dead. Even if it isn't dead, <laughs> if it looks dead, it's gotta go. So I want, if I do a nice base layer of greenery, um, it doesn't have to be, I want you to see it's kind of airy filling in but it's not like thick because I have that grid under there I just don't need as much greenery to complete my work which is really nice and when we're using seeded eucalyptus you know it can be hit or miss the bunch sizes can vary so when I'm ordering which is one of the big questions I get a lot is like how do you order greens without over ordering or under ordering and it really comes down to using recipes and estimating how much of a bunch do you think you're going to use? Are you going to use a stem? Are you going to use part, part of a bunch? Will one bunch do four centerpieces? You know, that kind of thing. So that's what I do. Sometimes you just have to be a little bit imaginative. So again, I'm going to just spin it. And there we go. So you can see I'm coming out of the perimeter a bit, but overall... It's not super tall, but there is some movement to it. And now I'm gonna to get to flowering. So first things first, I'm gonna start with my hadrangea. And here's how I do it. I spray them down with water pretty heavily. I spray them underneath. I spray them on top. Inside, outside, upside down. So they're nice and wet, okay? I'm gonna remove basically like all the foliage, unless the hydrangea is incredibly like healthy and happy and strong and the leaves are likewise, I'm taking those leaves off because they're taking energy away from the bloom. So I'm just gonna cut like around the node and place, okay? So I'm doing this to give a mirroring effect, right? I want some white on this side, some white here. I'll just go ahead to make it easy and add my other white flowers too. So stock. Again, I'm always looking at my shape, my color, and my mechanics. There's a teensy little nub in right here. Now you're not going to be able to see that. With stock, I'm always taking off like every single leaf. And I'm always removing bottom blooms, even if they look fine today, because they won't look fine tomorrow. So I want to anticipate what this is going to look like. I want to anticipate that the low down blooms, those low down dirty blooms, <laughs> the first blooms to bloom are not going to last as long as I want them to. Um, using some thistle for texture. Again, these are always different. Sometimes you get like deep bracts. Sometimes you don't. <laughs> and here, my um, pillow shifted a little bit. It's kind of off. It's not aligned right now. Uh-oh, what am I going to do? I'm just going to shift it back, okay? <laughs> shift it right back into place. Same thing if I deliver it and it's slightly askew if it's off kilter you just put it back uh the thistle are also great for covering up little teeny nubbins so here's one of those attachment points boom i can get a little bit of height with it i can also use the bracts themselves as a little bit of like a grid right so i can weave flowers in and out and then because I don't work neat, I just drop my stems right on the ground. 
Uh, let's see. Next, I'm going to go orange. Orange roses. Orange spray roses. So these are orange babes. What a babe. What a babe. Um, they're great. They also, I've also used yellow babe a ton. I'm going to take off the leaves. I'm going to pluck the petals. If the petals look good, I'm going to leave them. Anything that's damaged, a little bit discolored on the outside for some reason. All right, clean it up. Cut it. Place it. So I'm going for a little bit of shape here, distributing the color a little bit, coming out of the perimeter of the vase. I'm also going to, that last one didn't have it. Spray roses often have this dead little piece of stem right in the center. It's where they had uh, pruned, cut back so that the spray roses would pop up on the sides, right? The apical dominance. So if that's the case, you wanna take it out of there. You wanna take any dead stems out. You know better, you don't wanna leave it in there. Just because that's the way it came to us doesn't mean that's the way it's going to go out to the customer. Okay, so nice and clean. Again, and I'm going to put that here. So it's they're relating to each other, but it's not like white, 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 orange, orange. <laughs> it's not quite, not quite that obvious. Okay. Next, I'm going to do some mums because it's a little bit of a different color, but also because they're a little bit bigger. And I want to fill in some holes. There we go. And here's a slightly different color, right? So they're giving fall vibes. And again, they're relating to each other. You can kind of see this little bit of color coming into focus there. Next, I'm gonna do my peach roses. Again, always plucking the petals. I've plucked and plucked. I didn't like that rose placement, so I'm gonna put it over here. Now I'm going to switch over to my Dahlia. Oh, actually, no, no. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch over to something that I kind of wish I put in earlier, but it's okay. The Amaranthus. So I couldn't resist this like brown Amaranthus. It's just like a, I don't know. It's just so fun. I thought it's kind of perfect. It looks so pretty. In between, in between the colors of the mums. I don't know. I went for it. I also got some beautiful burgundy amaranthus. So I'm gonna stick this kind of in the center here. I wanna see what I think. It's kind of different. It's a little, can't really see it in the video so much. And I think it's better off because you know what? I don't really like the placement. <laughs> it's like a little too, it looks like something that's wilting instead of something that's meant to drape. So I'm gonna take it out of there. I'm gonna cut it again a little shorter and I'm gonna place it right here. Cause I like the way it kind of relates to this mom. And I think it looks really pretty with a little bit of that stock. Anyway, that's the right place. Should never be afraid to make more than one change or placement. Burgundy Dahlia can go right in the center there. I'm gonna zhuzh my mums a little bit so that there's more of a triangle effect going on. This 
scabiosa. I feel like you can't, it's so dark, you can't see it so well. So the scabiosa to give us a little bit of a dance, a little bit of movement, relate back to the Dahlia, of course. Another one. And again, because they can droop a little bit, instead of, because they droop, instead of putting it droopy side down, I'm gonna face it up towards the sun a little bit. This is a good tip for anything that droops, sunflowers, anything that has a natural droop to it. <laughs> yeah, because it's gonna just do what it wants anyway. Um, no, what that is, the reason that fell is because I didn't have it in the grid. Now I've got it in there. See how beautiful? It's just standing up perfectly. So you can kind of see there's some dimension. But my general rule is I want to be able to see over the top of the centerpiece when I'm sitting at the table. So this is my test and I can definitely see over the top, no problem. Um, which is a good thing. I've got one more peach rose to add into the mix. Again, plucking the petals. Again, looking for the hole, looking for what it relates to. So I love the peach with the burgundy, but I also love this moment where there's kind of like a double peach going on. The color isn't, again, it's not like there's peach on one side, peach on the other, which is a fine way to design and balance color when you're like just starting out and you're like, I'm not sure how to do this. You know what? Balance them out on opposite sides a little bit. But it's really, really nice when you um, have more rhyme and reason to your like color placement and you're not afraid to maybe have the color be a little bit uneven meaning it's not every single side has every single color. All right, last thing. Oh, sorry, these were like little kind of like dried bunny grass. There's three of those. And then a couple of hypericum. I'm gonna take the, all the leaves off because again, whether it's dead or it just looks dead, it's gotta come off. And now I'm gonna look for where is this gonna make the most impact? I personally, love to have something right in the center when you look down. So I'm gonna put one hypericum there and then I'm gonna put one right over here where you may have been looking going, Allison, there's a hole, there's a hole. There we go. All right, so that's it. There's my centerpiece. <laughs> I had 16 of them for this wedding. I made 12. Well, now I've made 13 and I'm going to make three more. And then I'm going to be on to the rest of the things I need to do to finish up the wedding tonight, which is, um, you know, really important to me to have as much done as possible because I don't like to lose sleep and stress about all the stuff I'm going to do in the morning. I like to do as much as I can this evening. So I will be working on some um, flower girl stuff, flower girl petals, head wreath. All right, my last step is inspecting everything, plucking out any little spotted hydrangea, and then seriously misting with water. As you can see, a pretty heavy misting with water. And when I go ahead and try my best to lift up the camera and show you a little bit from the bird's eye view instead of dropping, <laughs> dropping my centerpiece. And that's what it looks like from above. So there we go. That's a centerpiece, a real centerpiece for a real wedding going out the door tomorrow. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're working on, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, keep doing beautiful work. I'll see you next time. Bye.